low carb shrimp and grits? I'll be the judge of that. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the almost weekly web series where we find, test, and sometimes create the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're going to tackle a coastal southern favorite, a dish that is near and dear to my heart shrimp and grits. Stay tuned. Folks, I love shrimp and grits. It's a dish that's equally at home at a fancy dinner party as it is on the weeknight dinner table. So today I'm going to show you how we can convert um, a delicious coastal southern favorite like shrimp and grits into something that we can enjoy on a low carb meal, especially on a weeknight. One of my tricks here is frozen cauliflower. And um, yes, fresh cauliflower is great, um, but for the price, for what we're going to do when you're usually ricing it, you know, ricing your cauliflower or mashing your cauliflower or what we're gonna do, uh, something in between to create the texture of grits. Why spend the money for fresh cauliflower um, when for about $1.79 you can get a frozen pound uh, from, the, from the freezer section. And I say fresh because, well, I'm in the south, so it's August. There's not cauliflower growing within about 1,500 or 2,000 miles of where I am. So any fresh cauliflower that is standing in my grocery store has traveled cross country to get here. And they pick it weeks before it's ready to go and then ship it to our grocery store shelves where we say, oh, fresh cauliflower, it's summer. No, actually, no, that's a cold weather, uh, cold season uh, vegetable. So um, oftentimes the fresher option is frozen because this is usually taken within a couple of uh, days uh, of harvesting when it's ripe and ready to pick and taken to a processing facility and flash frozen and packaged and stored and then shipped. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, sometimes if you don't have to worry about texture, like we're going to do, we're going to mash it anyway, um, then sometimes frozen is best. Would I put a cauliflower, like would I put a vegetable tray out with dips and stuff for frozen cauliflower? Well, hell no. But um, this is a pretty good option, especially for a weeknight. So that's where we're going to start here. All right, uh, medium heat, pan over medium heat. What we're gonna do is um, uh, I've got some pancetta here and this is a pretty easy recipe and I've kind of fancied it up, I guess you could say, because I'm gonna have pancetta and, and um, shallots and some other things that you may not think about, but guess what? That's just bacon and onions is all that is. Uh, just uncured version of bacon and uh, a little bit slightly different onion. So just modify this as you see fit. Uh, this is just a template, a guideline. So, all right, um, pound of frozen cauliflower and we're just gonna throw that in a microwave safe bowl. I love a um, um, little casserole dish for this. Get out of the way. And don't even add water to it. This goes in the microwave for four minutes. Be sure to put a lid on it. If you don't have a lid, put a plate on top. Okay, so now while that's happening and that's in the microwave, we are going to saute our pancetta or our bacon, whichever you prefer. Um, this is about four ounces, uh, this package of boar's head, I think it was, um, pancetta. But if you don't have pancetta, then about six slices of bacon, just diced up. And we're going to put that in a medium high skillet. You don't need this screaming hot. There's no need, you know, all this is going to be really sort of low heat, okay? So we're just going to render this down just a bit. Now this looks kind of lean to me, so um, in the case of at least this pancetta, I might add a tablespoon of bacon fat to this as we can uh, go along here. Um, so what we're going to do is try to get everything ready at the same time. This is so going to happen so quickly. Um, it's all about 15, 20 minutes total. Um, but the shrimp needs to be eaten pre preferably to me. I like it best when it is fresh, when it's just come off the, off the heat. Um, and meanwhile, the grits, uh, our cauliflower, that can sort of wait for just a minute. So if you have to do one thing and then the other, get the grits made first and then uh, attend to the shrimp. So that's pretty easy. All right, so um, I was at the... Uh, fish market earlier today, wondering what I was going to film, knowing I needed to film, and um, we have a wonderful fish market here in uh, the town that I'm in, and uh, I found some beautiful gulf shrimp. Now, uh, a lot of people don't have access to fresh shrimp, and that's fine. You can use frozen, I would prefer frozen uncooked, get raw shrimp, not frozen uh, cooked shrimp for this. Get the frozen raw shrimp. They come in a one pound package and this was a one pound of, of uh, gulf shrimp that I have here. These are 1620s. That means there's 16 to 20 shrimp per pound. 
Okay, that's what that, those numbers mean. You often see 24, 25 shrimp. That means there's 24 to 25 shrimp in a pound. Um, this is 1620s. They're a nice size. I think they're pretty. They, they look pretty good for, the, for what we need them for here. And I prefer tail on. Um, that's sort of, I guess you could say the, the locals way to do it. Uh, you kind of want to get your fingertips a little bit greasy and a little bit buttery because there's a lot of butter and cream in this um, from picking up your shrimp tails uh, uh, to eat your shrimp by hand. Um, it's generally not a knife and fork kind of, kind of food. Um, but that's up to you. All right, so we're gonna get this bacon or pancetta in my case. Get this sauteed. It might be a little bit hot. I'm gonna turn it down just to scotch. And we're gonna leave this in the pan until it gets crispy and then we're gonna take it out and leave the bacon fat um, or pancetta fat, pork fat behind for us to add a little bit of fat to and cook our shrimp in. So, um, and then at the end we'll add this crispy bacon, crispy pancetta to the top. Uh, for a final garnish. So just let this render and while that's working let's check on our um, cauliflower that's in the microwave. This, this is our cauliflower. It's been in for four minutes. Probably just needs a stir. Yeah it's nowhere near done. All right we're good. It's gonna take about 10 minutes mostly in the microwave for this. Back in the microwave another five minutes. Okay so we're almost here with this pancetta. We need to pull this up now. Yeah that looks pretty good. You don't want to go too far with this. You want it crispy, but you certainly don't want to burn it. And all that beautiful um, pork fat stays behind and does its job here in a minute. So let's begin to pull this up here. Take it out with a slotted spoon. Leave the fat behind. Okay. From here, we're going to take uh, one shallot and brown this in the um, pork fat. Just one shallot or uh, about two tablespoons of onion if you have an onion. This doesn't take long at all. This happens pretty quickly. So don't let this get ahead of you. Keep your eye on the ball. Okay, so once this gets a little bit of color on it, we're gonna toss in, um, this is a, a one tablespoon of garlic, minced garlic. I use a jarred product sometimes, I really do. On a weeknight meal like this, heck yeah. So this only needs, literally, this only needs about 30 seconds because if you burn this, you've ruined it. You gotta start over, truthfully. Burnt garlic will ruin a dish instantaneously and that is not what we want today. So to that, three tablespoons of salted butter, okay? And then again, you don't want this pan screaming hot. This is not, you're not searing meat here, but we're gonna put this, um, put this shrimp in. Once this butter melts, oh yeah, it's ready to go. So here's a pound of peeled, deveined, tail on shrimp. I like tail on, you choose what your family likes. And in it goes and just leave it alone for a minute. Put it in and leave it alone. Let it sit. I'm gonna move this up to a little bit more, a little more heat. Okay, so um, this has been sitting here for 10 or 15 seconds. After a few minute, seconds, just move it around. You don't want the garlic to burn. Um, and you don't necessarily want to sear this shrimp. You're basically making what you would probably know as a scampi sauce, right? Shrimp scampi. And that's another thing, this, is, this beautiful shrimp, once you've done this, you know, we're gonna put it on our grits. Um, you could definitely put this on some shirataki noodles, so if you like those, um, uh, zoodles, zucchini noodles, anything like that. Heck, you could just eat it alone if you wanted to. Um, but with the riced cauliflower taken down to grit territory um, and seasoned appropriately, you really get a pretty decent approximation of shrimp and grits, truthfully. Okay, at this point, this has been in for about eight minutes now. Whew, all that steam. And I use a potato masher, all right? That's how I can kind of judge the um, texture of what's happening. So let's see, nope, still needs three or four more minutes. And you'll just, you'll, you'll know how this works. If you're making mashed potatoes, you're gonna cook it a little longer than if you're making grits. If you're making rice, you're gonna cook it a little less than if you're making grits. So you sort of learn. Get out of there. 
All right, this guy's going back in for about four more minutes. Okay, let's see how our shrimp is doing. Um, you don't want to overcook these. Shrimp does not take a long time to cook. So that's why um, you really just kind of want to get your uh, cauliflower in the microwave first. Um, if you want to do your cauliflower on the stovetop, that's fine too. Just put it in the stock pot, uh, but you'll need to add about a quarter cup of water to that because the heat from the, the direct heat will obviously make that um, a little harder to cook, um, but I do it all the time. If you're using fresh cauliflower, just do the exact same thing. You can do it in the microwave or you can do it in, um, on the stove in a pot. Just be mindful of the way you're cooking it and the method. That's all you got to do. Easy peasy. Okay, our um, cauliflower is almost done. We're gonna, this is ready. We're going to turn this off. Shut it down, take it off the heat. Um, or I can just leave it here. This is an induction burner, so it'll stay off the heat. But from here, um, we're going to add a few things. This is about a half cup of scallion. Um, you can use more than this. This gets, now this is where we get into like adding some heavy carbs. So you got to be careful with how much of this you add. And then we're also going to add our bacon. In this case, it was pancetta, which is just Italian uncured bacon. It's the same thing. One's just usually smoked and cured and one's not, and one's fresh. So that's all there is to that. So we just leave this and it's gonna wait on us for us uh, to finish the cauliflower. And then we're gonna plate and uh, devour this. <laughs> Probably needs a little bit of salt as well. A Little bit of salt, little kosher salt. Black pepper. Give that one last stir through. This looks beautiful, y'all. Now this makes about, um, for this uh, size, makes about three servings. Um, it depends on if you're gonna have other things, if you're gonna have another side, like generally shrimp and grits is, is a meal into itself, so it's not served with another side. Um, but if you do that, you could probably get four servings out of this. Um, it just depends on how hungry you are. I, in our household, this is probably for two people. Um, but just know that your carb count is going to be adjusted from there. Okay, so our cauliflower is now out of the microwave. Whoa, look at all that steam. And it's probably going to be just right at perfect. And the way I can tell is by my trusty potato masher. That's just the way. Oh, yep. So from here, what I forgot to put out earlier was a tablespoon of butter for that grit that grit flavor here you know we don't have the corn i'm gonna be honest with you here's the truth about these grits now and i'm gonna be straight up with you um god i love grits i really do i don't want to mash this too much while i'm talking um i love grits uh, and the one of the things i love about them is the corn flavor i mean the, it's made out of hominy or corn and that's one of the things that people who love grits love and that's what i love but i also love the texture and the soft luscious velvety texture of grits so um, the good thing about this is you can get pretty close to that texture with this, with the cauliflower. You can get pretty close, but you're never going to match. I hate to say it to all of us grit lovers out there in the South. We're never truly going to duplicate the corn grit taste, right? But the benefit of that is also for those who inexplicably, I do not understand, do not like grits. Those of you, many of you are. Um, this is a, a nice in-between because you get some of that texture, but you don't get the grit flavor that might be what's turning you off. So, you know, it's sort of the best of both worlds and the worst of both worlds. Um, we have something pretty close, uh, but not all the way. So, all right, to this, we're going to add, I'm just gonna steal my spoon here. We've got to add some three tablespoons of heavy cream to our grits. This is gonna help us work this. And generally, there's a cheese added a lot of times, and a lot of times it's smoked Gouda. And I love smoked Gouda. So this is smoked Gouda, um, about four ounces of shredded smoked Gouda. All right, so let's just work on this for a minute. Get it to the texture we like. I'm gonna also add some salt, not much, and some black pepper because truth okay if you're from the south and you do enjoy grits you if you're like me you love them with a lot of black pepper that's part of the <laughs> that's just part of it you know so we're going to try to get close to that see what we can do here for you so just give this a whirl with our spoon and try to do some back spoon mashing here you know we don't want mashed potatoes right so um this is 
the same recipe that we all use for mashed potatoes and rice, but it's about how you work with it texturally. So some of this needs to be mushed, but there still needs to be a little bit of a bite in it. Think oatmeal. If you've never had grits, think um, the texture of maybe oatmeal. So. That's annoying, right? All right, so that's it. Let's plate. Watch this. Nice little bowl of grits. That might be a tad thick. If I were to, I might put a little um, cream in that to thin that out if I felt too, um, like that was just too much. Oh yeah. Now, I need another spoon. Now let's come in here and you just want some of this scampy type buttery goodness. Get you about six shrimp on there. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, y'all, that's, if you could smell it in here, <laughs> it's like crazy. And you know what I forgot at the store was a lemon. This needs a lemon squeeze on top like nobody's business. So I might, oh, it makes me so mad that I forgot a lemon. Like just grr but you just have to imagine it with lemon. It should have a beautiful squeeze of lemon on it. So, oh my God, y'all. That looks amazing. So, low carb shrimp and grits. Let me show you what the numbers run on this. I ran the numbers on this earlier. It's about 28 grams of fat, about eight net carbs, there's 11 and a half total and there's three and a half carbs uh, in fiber. So eight net carbs and about 32 and a half grams of protein. So it's really um, quite doable in a low carb diet. So let's see what it tastes like. That is gorgeous. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm in love right now. Let's see. Oh, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm, yeah. The bacon and the pancetta and the butter and the onions, the shallot, the garlic, all of that really is just fantastically flavored. And the cauliflower is such a really worthy alternative to grits. It really kind of is in this instance, especially with smoked Gouda cheese, right? Hmm. Shrimp is cooked perfectly. It's just gorgeous. I have some friends down here who think the same. Come here. Give them a shrimp tail. All right, guys. So to me, this is a delicious, worthy alternative to low-carb shrimp and grits. It has all of the flavor and all of the texture of, of shrimp and grits. So... Pfft. As far as I'm concerned, this is a winner. This took all of 20 minutes total, start to finish. Um, but it's something you can do for a weeknight meal at home that's fast and easy, but it also holds up well to a nice dinner party. Just increase the portion sizes if you've got six or eight people to feed, and it looks pretty fancy. Um, and it's easy to do, and we know the secret. So, cheers. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're new to my channel, check out the other stuff. We do a lot of recipe battles and pit a lot of low-carb recipes against one another and taste them here to find out which we love and which is the best. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, you know as well as I've, I do, I've said it a thousand times, these videos are a way for me to stay on a low-carb eating plan. And looking in the end of this camera every week is a way to keep me honest and I appreciate it. So thank you for all you're doing. If you're new here, please uh, like this video and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, hit the little bell icon down below and that'll let you know when I release new videos. Um, I'm trying to do it almost every week. <laughs> Sometimes it's a couple of times a week. But anyway, love you guys. Stay tuned. More to come.